Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Unbound, I'd like to welcome you to the Susan Stein Shiva Theater and tonight's presentation of The War of the Worlds. In case of fire started by Martian heat ray, please proceed to the nearest fire exit. There are two to your right and one behind. Please be aware that during the presentation, fog effects will be used. We also ask that you please turn off all cell phones as we will not allow you to call for help at any point during the invasion. We hope you will enjoy the show, and now, your host for the evening, Orson Welles. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Orson Welles. I would like to take a moment before we begin to tell you a little bit about what we're going to do here tonight. Many years ago, when I was a much younger man, I was behind a little bit of radio hokum known as the War of the Worlds. Perhaps you've heard of it. It caused quite a stir. During the next hour, everything you hear will be absolutely true and based on solid fact. Nothing more and nothing less. And now with your permission, a small act of magic with the sympathetic support of yourselves, ladies and gentlemen, this just might work. Imagine this, if you will. It is night. A night of the mind and of the sound stage. There is just one illusion I would like to create. <laughs> creatures that swarm and multiply within a drop of water. With infinite complacence, people went to and fro over the earth about their little affairs, serene in the assurance of their dominion over this small, spinning fragment of solar driftwood, which by chance or design, man has inherited out of the dark mystery of time and space. Yet across an immense ethereal gulf, minds that are to our minds, as ours are to the beasts in the jungle. Intellects, vast, cool, and unsympathetic, regarded this earth with envious eyes and slowly but surely drew their plans against us. In the 39th year of the 20th century came the great disillusionment. Near the end of October, business was better. The war scare was over. More men were back at work. Sales were picking up. On this particular evening, October 30th, 
The Crosley Service estimated that more than 32 million people were listening in on radios. In the next 24 hours, not much change in temperature. A slight, dis a slight disturbance of undetermined origin has been reported over Nova Scotia, causing a low pressure area to move down over the northeastern states, bringing a forecast of rain accompanied by winds of light gale force. Maximum temperature 66, minimum 48. This weather report comes to you from the Government Weather Bureau. We take you now to the Meridian Room in the Park Plaza Hotel in downtown New York, where you'll be entertained by the music of Ramon Brakeo and his orchestra. <laughs> Yet, 
how do you account for these gas eruptions occurring on the surface of the planet at regular intervals? Mr. Phillips, I, uh, I cannot account for it. By the way, sir, uh, how far is Mars from the Earth, for the benefit of our listeners? Uh, approximately 40 million miles. Well, that seems to save enough. Thank you. Uh, just a moment, ladies and gentlemen, someone has just handed Professor Pearson a message while he reads it. Let me remind you that we are speaking to you from the observatory at Princeton, where we are interviewing the world-famous astronomer, Professor Pearson. Uh, just one moment, please. Professor Pearson has handed me the message which he has just received. Uh, Professor, may I read the message to this email? Certainly, Mr. Phillips. Ladies and gentlemen, I shall read you a wire addressed to Professor Pearson from Dr. Gray, of the Natural History Museum, New York. Quote, 9.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, seismograph registered shock of almost earthquake intensity occurring within a radius of 20 miles of Princeton. Please investigate. Signed, Lloyd Gray, Chief of Astronomical Division, unquote. Professor, could this occurrence possibly have anything to do with the disturbance observed on planet Mars? Harvey, Mr. Phillips, this is probably a meteorite of unusual size, and its arrival at this moment in time is really coincidental. However, we shall conduct a search as soon as daylight permits. Thank you, Professor. Ladies and gentlemen, for the past 10 minutes, we have been speaking to you from the observatory at Princeton, bringing you a special interview with Professor Pearson, noted astronomer. This is Carl Phillips speaking. <laughs> we are returning you now to our New York studio.